Hi everyone. Today we are starting with the fourth story of your book and the name of the story is The Rat Trap and it is written by Selma Lagerlof. So the rat trap, what exactly do you mean by a rat trap? So rat trap is basically a trap that is being built a material uh, which is kept to trap the uh, rat into it like the literal meaning of that so are we going to talk about that rat trap well in yes but literally or symbolically is what we are going to see when we start with the narration so here in this chapter the main uh, you know the main uh, uh, person or the main uh, character rather of the story is a person who makes this rat trap okay and how is the story how his life is considered to be a rat trap itself or how he compares everything to a rat trap is how is what we are going to understand once we start with the narration so let's quickly start with the narration but let's first have a look to a uh, look about the author so, Selma Lagerlof was a Swedish writer whose stories have been translated into many languages. A universal theme runs through all of them, a belief that the essential goodness in a human being can be awakened through understanding and love. This story is set amidst the mines of Sweden, rich in iron ore, which figure large in the history and legends of that country. The story is told somewhat in the manner of a fairy tale. So here the main thing that you must remember is that this is a belief in all her stories that there is an essential goodness that lies in every human being and that can be awakened, you know, can, that can be brought to the forefront through an understanding and love. So by understanding, by love, by these emotions, how, you know, the good part of a human being can come to the forefront. Well, let's just relate it to the title of the story, Rat Trap. So to understand it better, to understand it more, let's quickly start with the narration of the story. Once upon a time, there was a man who went around selling small rat traps of wire. He made them himself at odd moments from the material he got by begging in the stores or at the big farms. But even so, the business was not especially profitable. So he had to resort to both begging and petty thievery to keep body and soul together. Even so, his clothes were in rags, his cheeks were sunken and hunger gleamed in his eyes. So I told you the main character of the story is a person who makes this rat trap. So there was a person, there is a man who makes these rat trap which are made of wires. So he's using wires to make these rat traps. And in fact, he's making them, you know, at odd moments. Means at very, uh, in very small time, he's preparing that from whatever material, you know, he gets by either begging in the stores, in the nearby markets, in the nearby shops or by begging in the farms which are nearby. But even though, you know, he's uh, getting those materials by begging and he's making those rat traps, selling them, that is not sufficient. Therefore, he also have to resort, like he also have to turn or he also have to, uh, you know, indulge into other activities that, uh, that is begging and small thievery. Petty means small. Small thievery, small th stealing, to keep body and soul together, which means for his survival, for his livelihood. So for his survival or livelihood, that's exactly what we mean by keeping the body and soul together. So even so, you know, his clothes itself were made in rags, his cheeks were sunken. And, it, and the hunger gleamed, that is, shone, we say shine, shone in his eyes. So he was, the, you know, you can just imagine a man like that who is not wearing proper clothes, is somewhat in rags, he's begging, he's making those small rat traps with the wires and whatever material that he's getting after begging and he's selling them. 
but even that is not you know uh, sufficient for him to be alive therefore he is actually indulging into other activities that is by you know by uh, you know small stealing activities so as to be alive so as to survive and have a livelihood no one can imagine how so how sad and monotonous life can appear to such a vagabond who plods along the road left to his own meditations so here you know it is being said by the author that no one can ever imagine that such a life of a wanderer a vagabond is a person who is homeless is wanderer so a homeless wanderer a person who does not have a home and he keeps going moving from one place to another he is just wandering so the author is saying that you know for such a person who is homeless who is just wandering here and there the life could be very sad and boring monotonous is boring and then he's uh, the author is also saying that you know he is just moving around he is just plods along on the road plod means he just moves heavily takes heavy steps so moves or walks heavily on the road and is just left to his own meditations means his own thoughts or his own ideas so this man who's just uh you know having a sad and a boring life he's homeless and he's just wandering here and there here and there with those heavy steps that he's taking while he's walking and he's just lost in his own thoughts lost his own a uh, lost in his own ideas but one day this man had fallen into a line of thought which really seemed to him entertaining he had naturally been thinking of his rat traps when suddenly he was struck by the idea that the whole world around him the whole world with its land and seas its cities and villages was nothing but a big rat trap it had never existed for any other purpose than to set baits for people so one day when he was just moving here and there and you know suddenly he was in his own thought process when he was just thinking about the rat traps that he makes and sells so suddenly he started you know an idea came to his mind which he found very entertaining very uh, pleasing and that idea was that he felt that the entire world around him is a rat trap that is the riches the comforts of the uh, you know the land the sea the cities and villages so these comfortable life the world around him the people living in the world around him these are just you know the uh, our ways our baits to actually trap the people and they are also if once they you know start enjoying the luxury or the comfort the comfortable life then they are trapped into it just like the rat is trapped into the rat trap and is never able to come out of it so similarly he is saying that this comforts and luxuries of life is actually you know trapping the people like a rat trap does to a rat it offered riches and joys shelter and food heat and clothing exactly as the rat trap offered cheese and pork and as soon as anyone let himself be tempted to touch the bait it closed in on him and then everything came to an end so what is this the riches and joys the food the shelter the clothing these are all the comforts of life the luxuries of life everybody wants it and it is being said by the rat trap that you know once people start enjoying this comfortable life the luxuries of their life then they never want to come out of it they are always wanting more of that therefore he is saying that you know these luxuries of life these comforts of life are what they are the baits you know bait means something that it is attracting tempted means they are attracted to enjoy that life to continue being a part of it just like a rat who which gets tempted which gets attracted to the cheese or pork that is kept in order to trap it in the rat trap the world had of course never been very kind to him so it gave him unwanted joy to think ill of it in this way it became a cherished pastime of his during many dreary ploddings to think of people he knew 
who had let themselves be caught in the dangerous snare and of others who were still circling around the bait so now you know because he is a wanderer he is homeless probably you know the world has not treated him well uh, wherever he goes you no know, whosoever he meets probably the people have not been very kind and uh, gentle towards him so therefore he is having this idea this perspective of the world that you know this comforts of life is just trapping the people uh, in their uh, you know circle in their vicious circle and people are never you know getting out of that so this is his perception about the world and the comfort of life and you know this thought this idea actually became a cherished pastime for him cherished means his favorite pastime he kept thinking about this all the time during his walk heavy walk dreary ploddings and then he thinks of it that either people are trapped into this dangerous circle or they are either circling around that wanting to attain it wanting to achieve it one dark evening as he was trudging along the road he caught sight of a little grey cottage by the roadside and he knocked on the door to ask shelter for the night nor was he refused instead the sore faces which ordinarily met him the owner who was an old man without a wife or child was happy to get someone to talk to in his loneliness immediately he put the porridge pot on the fire and gave him supper then he carved off such a big slice from his tobacco roll that it was enough for both the stranger's pipe and his own finally he got out an old pack of cards and played majolis with with his guest until bedtime so here one evening you know it was about to get uh, probably it was late in the evening and he was just walking here and there when suddenly you know at a certain distance he saw there was a small grey cottage a small grey hut and a house so he thought that okay let's just try my luck let's just go and ask or uh, request the owner to allow him to stay at night to give him shelter for that specific night and you know the moment he went there so probably every time what happened that he was refused people would not greet him well but for the first time he saying that you know he went there and there was an old man who was not having any family no wife no child staying there he was staying in that hut in that home all alone so he was very happy to find a stranger and he you know agreed instantly that yes he was ready to give him shelter for the night in fact he even you know uh, cooked porridge for him gave him food to eat prepared a uh, supper means evening snacks for him gave him that and uh, you know he was having that tobacco roll he even shared that with him so he was happy that the old man who was staying in the hut was happy because he was staying there all alone he had no one to talk to and today he actually got someone whom he can speak to whom he can have a good time with and therefore he allowed the uh, rat uh, the man the person who sells the rat trap to be here for that night they also played uh, in fact uh, the game of guards until bedtime the old man was just as generous with his confidences as with his porridge and tobacco the guest was informed at once that in his days of prosperity his host had been a crofter at the ramstow iron works and had worked on the land now that he was no longer able to do the day labor it was his cow which supported him yes that bossy was extraordinary she could give milk for the creamery every day and last month he had received all of the 30 kronor in payment so now the old man you know the uh, this man the uh, the stranger is saying that this old man you know where he was staying at the old man's place he saying that this old man was very generous very kind towards him he not only shared his tobacco his food but he also shared his confidences means some personal things also he was sharing with the stranger and like in the flow of the conversation he also informed the stranger that when he was a young man he was working as a crofter in the ramsdow iron work there but now obviously since he's grown old he will not be able to do that much of hard work in the day or he will not be able to provide that day labor therefore he is now dependent on his cow 
who is actually giving a lot of milk which he sells out to the creamery and what is a creamery creamery is a factory that you know makes this cheese or uh, uh, you know they they make this cheese uh, or cream the factory that manufactures or prepares cheese and cream that is a creamery so factory which manufactures cream slash cheese is a creamery so he's saying that now that he's not able to work on the iron fields therefore his cow is supporting and how is the cow supporting the cow is giving a lot of milk which he then sells to the creamery that is the factory that manufactures the cream or cheese and he is also telling him that you know last month by selling that uh, uh, milk to the creamery to the factory he also earned 30 kronor in payment that is kronor is the currency of sweden currency of sweden so he got 30 kronors now just like the indian currency is rupees so the currency of uh, sweden is kronor and he is saying that i got 30 kronors in return for giving them the milk the stranger must have seemed incredulous for the old man got up and went to the window took down a leather pouch which hung on a nail in the very window frame and picked out three wrinkled 10 kronor bills these he held up before the eyes of his guest nodding knowingly and then stuffed them back into the pouch so while you know the old man was telling him about his profession and how you know his cow is now supporting him by giving him that milk which he is selling to that factory and how he earned 30 kronors so in the flow of the conversation he also goes and shows uh, the money which was kept in a leather pouch which was hanging in the uh, rod of the window and uh, he just shows that money to the stranger to the person to the guest whom he was meeting for the first time to you know to tell him that yes see this is the 30 kronor that i uh, earned last month the next day both men got up in good season the crofter was in a hurry to milk his cow and the other man probably thought he should not stay in bed when the head of the house had gotten up they left the cottage at the same time the crofter locked the door and put the key in his pocket the man with the rat trap said goodbye and thank you and thereupon each went his own way so now after the old man showed him the money they all went to sleep and they all got up in the good season means almost in a very fresh manner they got up at almost at the same time and the crofter was in a hurry because he had to milk his cow he had to again go out and the guest the stranger he thought that he should also get up he should also not be sleeping around when the guest or the head of the not the guest when the head of the house is awake and he still uh, he is working outside therefore they both got up they both uh, you know uh, went out in different directions and the crofter locked his house kept the key with himself and he walked to his place of work and the stranger walked to the other direction but half an hour later the rat trap peddler stood again before the door he did not try to get in however he only went up to the window smashed a pane stuck in his hand and got hold of the pouch with the 30 kronor he took the money and thrust it into his own pocket then he hung the leather pouch very carefully back in its place and went away so what happened when the crofter locked his house so at that time the crofter and the stranger went their own ways but after half an hour the stranger the rat trap peddler the peddler means the seller a small seller so the rat trap peddler came back to the hut but he did not you know try to open the door he just went uh, you know outside that specific window and smashed the pane means he just uh used his hand and smashed the window he broke the window he broke the window and you know he uh, took out that leather pouch in which money was kept so he took out that money thrust it into his own pocket means 
just kept that money in his own pocket and again he you know made sure that he is uh, hanging that or keeping that leather bag back at its place by hanging it very carefully and then after doing so he just went away as he walked along with the money in his pocket he felt quite pleased with his smartness so he was very happy that yes he was able to steal the money and he just got out of it without getting caught he realized of course that at first he dared not continue on the public highway but must turn off the road into the woods during the first hours this caused him no difficulty so while he you know actually uh, took the money he steal the money he, st- he was very happy about it but then he decided that he should not uh, you know use the main road the public highway rather he should just travel through the woods means through the forest in order to escape or in order to avoid getting caught therefore he just went to inside the woods inside the forest and for the first one hour this was not a difficult thing for him to do but let's see what happened after that later in the day it became worse for it was a big and confusing forest which he had gotten into he tried to be sure to walk in a definite direction but the paths twisted back and forth so strangely he walked and walked without coming to the end of the wood and finally he realized that he had only been walking around in the same part of the forest all at once he recalled his thoughts about the world and the rat trap so here what happened this stranger who avoided that public highway and he thought that okay he is going to travel between the woods between the forest and come out of it but you know later in the day he just realized that he's just moving uh, in the same direction so he tried to move straight but after a very long period of time he realized that he is getting trapped it was a very dense forest it was a very confusing forest and all the while he was just moving around in the same part of the forest and that's exactly when you know the same thought came to his mind that how you know he thought the world was a rat trap and here exactly the woods the forest that he was moving about in, in through the out the day just felt like a rat trap because he was just moving around in the same place since morning so uh now his own turn had come that is you know his own turn had come to and he was trapped into the forest he had let himself be fooled by a bait and had been caught the whole forest with its trunks and branches its thickets and fallen logs closed in upon him like an impenetrable prison from which he could never escape so now the forest which is very dense with uh, and you know it's very confusing it's a very big forest very dense forest and he's describing it and he's saying that you know this forest seems like an impenetrable which is something that is impossible you know it's impossible to penetrate there and he's finding it to be an impenetrable prison from which no one can escape it was late in december darkness was already descending over the forest so it was late in december so obviously the days were shorter and at this time it, uh, the author is saying that darkness started prevailing means it was started getting to be dark outside now this increased the danger and increased also his gloom and despair means he was get now getting sad and despair means helpless why because he was initially very happy that yes he was so smart to uh, steal the money but and he thought that okay he is just going to travel through the woods and reach to a safer place without getting caught but just like the rat trap that he used to think about all the time the world being a rat trap this time the forest also trapped him he was not able to move out of the forest and now it was getting dark so he was getting very very sad and helpless of the fact that he was stuck in the forest and now it was getting late it was getting dark outside so finally he saw no way out and he sank down on the ground tired to death thinking that his last moment had come but just as he laid his head on the ground he heard a sound a hard regular thumping there was no doubt as to what that was 
he raised himself those are the hammer strokes from an iron mill he thought there must be people nearby so now when he was he, he accepted the fact that yes he was trapped in the forest and now he does not he was getting helpless and he realized that he is not he will not be able to come out of the forest so he thought that now his time has come he's tired and he's soon going to die and he decided to lie down but the moment he lied down on the ground he heard a sound a noise that was familiar and that noise was the hammering from the iron mill and that's when he realized that okay there are people who are nearby and he started thinking that okay let me follow the sound and let me reach closer to that he summoned all his strength got up and staggered in the direction of the sound so he just wanted to reach closer to more people and that's when he started following the sound he gathered summon means he gathered all his strength and started moving in a very staggered means in a very irregular manner in the direction of the sound so summon means gathered the ramps to iron works which are now closed down were not so long ago a large plant with a smelter a rolling mill and a forge so basically all the things that are required in a iron and steel plant it was all there a large smelter was there then there was a rolling mill and forge was there forge is a furnace now in the summer time long lines of heavily loaded barges and scows slid down the canal which led to a large inland lake and in the winter time the roads near the mill were black from all the coal dust which sifted down from the charcoal crates now it has been described that it was such a big farm with so many things available being it had a smelter it had a rolling mill it had a forge so it it was a big plant and it has been described that you know during the wind summer time there were uh, heavily loaded barges means heavily loaded boats were there in which the material was assembled was transported to different areas along the canal and during the winter time uh, you know the dust you know when you are working around with iron and coal you are hammering them then they have a dust so it is said that that coal dust sifted means it settled down uh, from the big charcoal crates onto the ground so settled or sprinkled it's like that During one of the long dark evenings just before the Christmas the master smith and his helper sat in the dark forge near the furnace waiting for the pig iron which had been put in the fire to be ready to put on the anvil so now he reached the place and he saw that there was a large furnace and it was just before the Christmas eve and there was a master smith and along with him there was his helper they both were sitting in front of the furnace and they were waiting for the pig iron pig iron is the raw iron which they had put into the fire and they were thinking that they are going to take the pig iron which were put in that fire will they'll take it out and put it on the anvil the anvil is basically a mold on which the iron was kept now every now and then one of them got up to stir the glowing mass with a long iron bar returning in a few moments dripping with perspiration though as was the custom he wore nothing but a long shirt and a pair of wooden shoes so what happened there was a furnace in which pig iron means raw iron was put into and there was a help there was a master smith and his helper now each time one of them used to get up they had a huge iron bar a iron rod and they were just stirring that iron the pig iron the raw iron that was kept in the furnace so this glowing mass is the pig iron which is put into the fire and it was glowing so they were just moving it and they were then coming uh, coming and sitting down then the next one used to go do the same thing and then come out but since they were working so close to the furnace so much heat such a high temperature that it felt that they were dripping with perspiration that is they were all sweating very badly so sweating badly and what were they wearing what was their attire they were wearing a long shirt with wooden shoes
all the time there were many sounds to be heard in the forge the big bellows groaned and the burning coal cracked the fire boy shoveled charcoal into the maw of the furnace with a great deal of clatter now he is saying uh, the stranger the person who is making that rat trap that you know there was a lot of sound that was coming the person this fire boy he shoveled matlab he thrusted shoveled means forcefully he is putting that thing uh, that is the charcoal into the maw that is into the mouth of the furnace with a great clatter means with a lot of sound with a what lot of noise what is he doing he is putting he is having the charcoal and he is forcing it thrusting it in the mouth of the furnace with by making a lot of sound by creating a lot of noise now outside road the waterfall so this is the situation inside the uh, farm inside the furnace but outside there was a roaring of waterfall and a sharp north wind whipped the rain against the brick tiled roof and then along with the noise of the waterfall we could also hear the heavy rains that were whipping against the roof whipping means that it was hitting on the tiled roofs of the furnace now it was probably an account of all this noise that the blacksmith did not notice that a man had opened the gate and entered the forge until he stood close up to the furnace so with so much noise happening inside and so much noise that was coming from outside the rat uh, the guest the stranger realized that maybe this is the reason why the person who were working inside that is the master smith and his helper did not realize that someone had opened the gate of the forge that is the furnace and had come inside till the time he was standing very close to the furnace surely it was nothing unusual for the poor vagabonds without any better shelter for the night to be attracted to the forge by the glow of the light which escaped through the sco- the sooty panes and to come in and warm themselves in front of the fire the blacksmith glanced only casually and indifferently at the intruder so here the thought of the blacksmith is said, is uh, expressed that you know this was not a new thing for them that a stranger is coming and uh, at night time and uh, you know uh, asking for shelter because they know that the noise that they were creating by working within the uh, near the furnace and uh, the you know light the glow of the uh, light that was coming out of the furnace uh, was actually uh, you know could be seen through the sooty panes and uh, people the strangers who were outside probably the chilly december night evening they would definitely wa- must be looking for a shelter so they do have people like this coming in very often so that they could take shelter for the night they could get the warmth from the furnace and be here so therefore for the blacksmith he just looked at uh, the intruder that is the stranger just like that he, he was not really uh, you know petrified that okay now who is here so he, he just found him to be an intruder means person who has entered his uh, place or come to his place without taking any permission so person who comes to one's place without taking so person who comes to one's place without taking any permission so he just looked at him very indifferently because he was used to it but what is sooty pains so when you know we are working near the furnace with the iron and coal so the dust of that coal the dust of that iron actually gets settled on the glass panes on the window and may, that is what we call as the sooty panes and through those window the light is coming out and is attracting the people that yes this is a place where they could shell take shelter for the night they could get warmth at night okay so he looked the way people of his type usually did with a long beard dirty rag, ragged and with a bunch of rat traps dangling on his chest 
so he just looked at him and he realized okay you know he's just a stranger just having a very bad and dirty beard and few rat traps are dangling on his chest means hanging from his chest he asked permission to stay and the master blacksmith nodded a haughty consent without honoring him with a single word so the stranger he just asked that can i stay for a night so the master smith who was working there he just nodded his head in a yes without uttering a single word from his mouth the tramp did not say anything either which means the stranger he himself did not say anything after that he had not come there to talk but only to warm himself and sleep so obviously this man this stranger was also looking for a place for shelter to get warm and he was also not looking for a company that okay i'll find people and i'll speak to them i'll talk to them so he just asked for the permission that if he could stay the night there so when he replied when he got the permission he just decided that okay so in those days the ramsto iron mill was owned by a very prominent iron master whose greatest ambition was to ship out good iron to the market he watched both and night both day and night to see that the work was done as well as possible and at this very moment he came into the forge on one of his nightly rounds of inspection so during this time the author is describing that this iron mill the ramso iron mill was owned by a very prosperous that is a very a very prominent iron master prominent means a very rich and a very prosperous iron master and a very rich iron master he was owning it and his ambition his aim was to ship out the good iron to the market and to ensure that he used to come on rounds every you know day he used to be there both day and night and at times he used to even come on the inspection he used to even come for inspection during the night time and today was one such day when this person the owner of the iron mill actually came at the night time to have an inspection so he was there on one of his nightly rounds of inspection